Steve Evans, uh, one place to start, and that's to talk about the celebration on Tuesday and whether you're going on to Strictly. <laughs> Listen, I, I think the call's probably expected now, isn't it? They can see the moves, you know, and uh, and I'm sure all those uh, female professional dancers are, are, are waiting to be part of it, me. So uh, I look forward to the call. <laughs> I mean, joking aside, the, the, the celebration was born out of the fact that the win over Cambridge was so important for so so many reasons yeah i think i think there was a partial uh bit inside all of us that people wrote us off you know we we play exceptionally well in three four games and take a point or so and results from a distance are not good but we knew internally our performances were very good so there was a little bit of frustration but we spoke about the two home games and how important they would be that if we could get two wins that the dressing room would um, would have to produce big performances, and they have. And um, you know we can be we can look back at the game and say it was apart from the odd one and a half chances. I think they have its total dominance and numerous chances, but no one else has done that to Cambridge post Neil Harris going in, and no one done it when Neil Harris left. Certainly Porsche didn't. So from that point of view, the, the performance just was. I said to you before, it's a bit of relief when you win these days, and to share it with the fans who I thought were brilliant. You know, seven thousand or so in the Lamex on on Tuesday night under the lights. Cambridge supporters deserve enormous credit as well. I'm not talking about the incidents that happened during the game, but enormous credit, travelling big numbers. Our fans come out in big numbers, and the atmosphere for a game at the Lamex was as, as good as I've seen. I mean, the thing was, if you take the, the, where we were this time last week, there wasn't really any sort of major panic, but there was a few nerves floating around. It's amazing how quickly two wins can actually just make that go away. Yeah, I think internally there was, we've kept it very much on a level, but we we all know in football is, as managers and coaches find out every week of every season, it comes down to results. Results are what determines what you're doing now, what you determines you're doing in the future. And we knew that we had to have two big games, two big performances at home. And you're right to say it, I think there was, there was people who sort of taking the approach where there we go, we've fallen away. We know every time we lose a game, that's the approach that people will take. Because no one wants us up there. They don't want us in that top group. No one. Little Steve each competing to be in the championship. It's unthinkable, someone said to my chairman the other day, it's unthinkable that your team could be competing to be in the championship. Why is it unthinkable when we've got a club that operates the way the chairman runs it? It's... it's um, a family orientated football club. It's a great place to come and work. We've got supporters who are who are living the dream. And I, and I mean that respectfully, as in, we all want to dream in football. Stephen, his supporters thinking the team could be in the playoffs at the end of the season to compete with Derby County and Barnsley and Peter United and the teams that are well known for operating in higher levels. So we'll just keep firmly grounded. We know that it can all be gone in a matter of two or three, four games. It could be gone from us. Um, but we want to make sure we keep this feeling that we've got in the group as long as it has. And we've got some, I can't even say men, we've got some characters in there because we have some superb female associated staff all around us at the club. So it's all of us. We're so focused in trying to deliver what people think is impossible. 12 months ago was that day up at Rochdale which proved in the end to be mm. really really pivotal in the course of the season do you think these two wins against Cambridge and Wickham are going to be equally as, as important yeah we hope so you know we we know that it's one game at a time and you know the, the beautiful thing about history is you can look back on it and the beautiful thing is you can look back and you learn every time your, your team plays um, I always had a feeling always had a feeling that Whatever happened at Rochdale, if we if we left Rochdale in that top three, we would finish in the top three because I knew the I knew the men I had in the dressing room, I knew the characters, I knew the support we were having behind us. We Leon has been fantastic, Chairman Stuart, the, all of the board, Marcus, they've, they've been superb to us. Um, so I always knew that then. And this since the turn of the year at the staff will tell you, and I think I said to you guys in the media, I always looked at Lincoln away in the, the first Saturday in March. I know how tough it is to get to that first Saturday in March. And I said, when we come out of Central Bank, that'll give us an idea where we are. For us to come out in the position we'd love to be in, we need to win. 
because I can see others around us winning. I can see Oxford having a retaliation back from losing a game. I can see Leighton Orient coming. Blackpool are still there. There's the host of teams, but we're only looking at, at Lincoln, totally focused on going to Lincoln and trying to get a result against what I think is an outstanding Lincoln side who are in an unbelievable run of form, nine unbeaten. I think it's five or six wins in that period. Absolutely dismantled a who I think is a is a very okay Shrewsbury side the other day, but it's not just that. They've they've um they've dismantled many before them in recent weeks and, and good teams. Um so from that point of view, when you listen to Michael Scabella's words, the manager up there, it's about evolution rather than revolution. He thinks they've got very close to where he sees this evolutionary team. He's a good judge, I agree with him. They're they're playing some special football, so we need to be ready. We need to be systematically good. We need to be organised. And we need to do what we've not done in a lot of recent times, which is take big chances when they come. And if we do that, we'll, we'll take what we can get at Central Bank. Yeah, I mean, their form is incredible at the moment. The top of the form table. But you, you've mentioned the, the chances. And that if there's, if there's been one criticism from myself, it has been you haven't put teams away when you've had those chances. You might only get one or two at Lincoln. I th- yeah, and I think if you said to me you now with the with the strikers got, we'd have accept we'd accept a couple of chances, and that that is not that's only defending our strikers because we normally score we normally score up until this little period recently. We've had ruthlessness in front of goal like earlier in the season. We used to give give Jamie Reid half a chance, we'd score. Um, but the kids the kids just come back from a ten day break, and sometimes it takes you that ninety minutes. Listen, let's let's talk about. The other side of the the game that our strikers have to produce, never say die, always on the move, always running, always defending, always working hard. Reedy gave us that and more the other night, and we'd expect if if Reedy if he's selected to to start or come onto the pitch, we make some chances he'll score. Kane Hemmings was has come in in two games has been, and I use the word appropriately, outstanding. Jordan Roberts went up front, has been outstanding. Oliver was brilliant when he played away at Wigan when he first came on. Then we had to really work on his fitness because he it hit him hard having that run of 75, 80 minutes away at Wigan. So from our point of view, we're confident whatever strikers we pick will score goals. I'm presuming everyone's trained this week after <laughs> after last week. Yeah, listen, we're, we're, listen, we're in good shape. You don't have to look at... We're in good shape at the minute. We, we left some players at the... Not in the 18 and worked really hard at the training ground and, the, and they've played a good part. They've, they've played a part this season. You know, Nathan Thompson and Ben Thompson and, you know, Elliot List was, was deemed to be fit enough to be in the squad the other night. We had him at the stadium and the supporters will see them get warmed up and get ready. Um, what we want to make sure is that when we're now bringing any player or other, other players into this 18, 19 man squad that's predominantly becoming the match day squad now, we want them to be fully deserving of it. And if we drop someone out, maybe sometimes, like two weeks ago, we left Luther Roden out. week before we left Van Kooten out. Sweeney was out the other night. McDonald came in his first game last Saturday after a brilliant performance against West Ham and then repeated it on the Saturday. But we changed that up in midweek and, and it worked for us. So it, that just means that everyone in this group has a has a big part to play. Um and if we get everyone playing a big part, then we'll, we'll see where it takes us. We just need to be in a good place Saturday night. That's my only focus. Then we have a free week, and then we can do some needed, some much-needed work on the training ground that, that we're crying for. Because Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, I think we've had one or two midweek breaks in about seven or eight, and that stops you doing a lot of the tactical work and a lot of the meaningful work on the training ground that we can't do. I was going to ask, because I think you've only got two midweek games left now, for the rest of the season, so it's, you have got that chance to get them. You have got the chance to rest bodies as well. Well, it helps us as well because, as everyone knows, we've got we've got some travelling to do. We've got Paul Simpson's Carlisle and, and Big Gary's Exeter. They're they you know I don't go as far on my holidays personally, you know, unless I'm going out. I'm going to Heathrow and I'm sitting a, a plane. But um, so in terms of travelling, we've got that to do. But it makes a massive difference for us when we go to one day a week because. We play with such a high intensity. We have to find a point of difference there. We cannot sign, if we're all being honest in this league, we cannot sign Portsmouth players as if we're competing with Portsmouth, with Derby, with Barnsley, with Peterborough, we we you know, and the and the we Lincoln, 
we, we just kind of go pound for pound. So our point of difference, we have to find players that can fit within a system that gives us a little bit of a difference of an identity. And ours is about application, is about effort, is about desire, is about passion. But most importantly, then you'd be able to play as well. And we think we've got that group. I really believe in these lads in the dressing room. I really believe they can put us in the playoffs at the end of the season. Unthinkable outside this office. Unthinkable. Even our chairman and Stuart and Marcus on the board, they blink. They blink with a six in League One. They blink. I hope they're blinking on the last day of the season when we play Cheltenham here. As, as all football fans do, I've been looking ahead and thinking, right, it'll be this sort of target to get to, which is this, so many wins. I mean, I, I guess you'll be the old adage of just one day, one game at a time. It, it can only be about one game at a time because if you'd have been at Port Vale when we conceded that harshly, <laughs> given 96-minute penalty, when we when we lose to Reading with a, a throw-in on goal, which is hard to believe, a throw-in on goal, so I don't think there's any contact. Um, they're down days so we have to just take it one day at a time at the end of the season it's got to be about six and above for us now now for it to be a an unbelievable season because up until now we've had a fantastic season no one can dispute that but we've had a fantastic season but it doesn't finish now it finishes hopefully for us sometime in May us, us thinking about we finish in April just doesn't give that fulfilment that as we sit here at the end of February. So we're in a leap year. Can't the leap year be the year of Stevenage Football Club? Can't the leap year be where a team like Stevenage, Wickham Wanderers have done it, haven't they? Wickham, they go to the to the championship when, when Gareth win promotion. And I was I can remember being on the phone to him the next day and it was he's, he kept using the word it's or two words. It's unbelievable. And for us to do it it would be it's unbelievable. But I believe in the dressing room that they can do it.